Doing. Just very quickly touching up the uh, bits of antifoul that we missed where the stands were, just while it's uh, swinging in the air. Should we have a hard part on when you work underneath? <laughs> trial just to make sure everything is working okay all ready for the big trip to do the 120 miles I think it is Right, sit rep. We've got a slight issue. Basically, we've had a couple of issues actually. So the boat went in the water, went in great, fired her up, engines fired great, moved water and all that sort of crap. Um, the alternators were overcharging, which is a bit of a panic. So we're there, obviously we could fix the alternators in the water, that's great. So I basically went around and turned everything on, everything DC on, and that brought the voltage down to a sensible level. Cool, we fixed that. And also, when we got onto the berth, I've actually diagnosed the problem. We've actually got a wiring fault for the signal wire for the alternators. Anyway, went out for a little sea trial. Um, when we started to give it some power, there was a, a vibration, big vibration. Richard, he's an old salt, as you can see, he can, he can drive a boat like. He looks at me and went, it's not good this. The, just the boat was shuddering. Initially I thought it was a misfire. Boat was shuddering. So we we're trying to diagnose what the issue could be. So obviously we've never used this boat before, but we know that the boat had bent propellers and a bent shaft. So we basically sent these off to specialists, had them had the shaft straightened, had the rudder straightened, um, and had the, the props re rejigged basically, repaired, rebalanced. So if we didn't know the boat, would say that the, the prop was very out of balance. Um, we went out, it was a very, very quick trip. It was very, because we were sort of running out of water to get back in. We don't know the area that well, so we don't properly trust the depth sounder, which I'm gonna actually test that in a minute with with, um, with a tape measure just to see what it's reading is, but we didn't properly trust it, do you know what I mean? Because we don't know yet. So we had to get back in pretty quick. So we've been sat here head scratching, 
um, trying, to, trying, to, trying to sort of figure out what could be the issue. So that's the process of elim elimination that we're doing at the moment. So it is now nine o'clock at night. The lighting out here isn't the best to be working in. No. Yeah. Right, so we've got a big vibration. Um, what we've just done is undone the coupling from the gearbox, or well, slacking all the bolts off. And at the moment we're measuring 27 foul out of alignment. And it should be zero zero two yeah basically bang trip so what now we need to do is move try and move the front of the engine over ever so slightly i thought i had some ratchet straps to tow off this engine to pull it that way but it turns out it's not a ratchet strap so we're gonna figure out how to move the engine over But we still don't know whether this is definitely the problem. <laughs> well, engine misalignment. It's a big one, isn't it's it? It's half. It's half the problem, isn't it? Tomorrow morning, we'll be going straight out on sea trials again. And if that's not the issue, we're probably going to have to get the boat back out the water, which obviously we don't want to do because it is a very, very expensive to get the boat lifted in and lifted out. And um, yeah, financially, we're not in a good situation at the moment, so. Everyone, fingers crossed, this fixes it. Sea trial number two. So why, why, why are we losing power? Why are we losing power? Come on, let's think. Fuel. It's a fuel delivery issue, isn't it? So a quick update, we've had a few issues, we've had a turbo issue, we've fixed that. We've had a, a big vibration issue, we've half fixed that by aligning the, the prop, well, we're aligning the engine to the prop. We're still not making that much power, so well, the engine's starting to come back to life, so we keep giving it runs in and out. We had a, an engine start to die on us. That ended up being, well, I, I opened the fuel drain on the bottom of the fuel fields and it sucked air in, so it's vacuuming up for some reason. So 
So we've now linked the tanks and removed the filler neck. So we're going to see if that's where the vacuum is coming from. But we know it's further downstream between the big fuel filter and the fuel tank. And it stops smoking as well, now the turbo works. Right, okay, so we was out running, giving the starboard engine some beans, made power, and all of a sudden the power drops, power drops, power drops. So then, let me find my little prop. Where has it gone now? My little knob gone. There you go. So there's got a drain valve on the very bottom of the filter housing. So I opened this, think, is it full of water or something like that? And all of a sudden, it went, Tsh! Okay, and then created loads of bubbles within the little float, it's not a float ball, the little sight glass at the bottom of the, of the fuel filter housing. So we stripped it all down. There's like a little one way, super beautiful all aluminium floaty ball there, look at that. So then we tipped this, which is the, is the centrifuge part of the filter. So the ball sits in there. I'll tip this upside down, look. And it's coming out. So that's a good sign. What is it? Coal. Coal, <laughs> yeah, it looks like coal to be honest. I bet it'll burn like coal. <laughs> so we think that might be the issue. That That is not, definitely not going to help at all. But where, how does it form? Where's it from? Who knows? I mean, the whole fuel supply system is huge. Everything about it. Look at the size of the fuel pipes. That's got to be 13 mil, something like that. Bigger than that. Huge fuel. So we're looking at them, we blew back on that. We're like, oh, it blew us back to the tank fine. You're not going to block that up. As Richard pointed out, it'll take my ball there to block that up. <laughs> He's bullying me. Right? So yeah, right, we need to clean this out now. So we're going to clean that out and then we're going to go for sea trial number three. <laughs> sea trial so we have lost the starboard engine again it's still backing up so obviously we thought the bits in the filter and stuff was the problem but there's something else so we're going back into the berth now but we're on one engine so it's going to make it a bit more difficult maneuvering around the air uh, around to dock the boat um, so Richard's at the helm for this one you collecting rocks yeah, prehistoric things. Okay, so we've trying to work out the vacuum things. We're taking stuff apart. So yeah, this has just come out of of, of, that. of that one. So that's definitely not going to help, is it? So we're gonna have another look inside the tank. Right, so I've removed the lumps of whatever they were. I've been referring to them as coal. Um, so they're on our. Both of them ran really well. Test number. What was test number we on, Jeff? Four. Test number four. Same engine. Same problem. Same problem? Yeah. What else could it be? No, there's, there's more. There's more crap somewhere, but we need to find it. It's running a lot better than the last time, though, isn't oh, yeah. it? We've still got a lot of vibration. Tonight I've definitely got to work on the um, maybe alignment again. But yeah, woo! Good old boats, eh? <laughs> Come here. At this point, you go. Where are you? I don't know. So it looks like we've still got some more dinosaur bones to um, find. <laughs> but we're getting, every time we go out, we're getting a step closer to it being okay. But I think the issues it, it's having is just because 
for years and years and years. It hasn't really been anywhere or done anything. So there's a lot of old crods that's just cement, like turned to like little bits of cement in the bottom of the tank. So just keep finding them and finding them. Obviously when we opened the fuel tank up, it was pretty clean and we didn't see anything like that when we had a good inspect last time. So it must have just been sitting in the pipes and turned to crud. Some more crud out of it. Right, so the sun is setting. It was quite bright through the camera, doesn't it? Still, still big issues. Still very low energy. I'd potentially say a slight low morale on my part, anyway. But what we've been doing, obviously, we've been having. I'm going to refer to it as coal from now on. It's like coal, it's a fuel and I'm sure if we'd burn it, it'd burn like coal. So we've got a little access hatch. Typical going dark now. Got a little access hatch there. And I've been pulling out chunks. So these chunks are what are giving us issues, aren't they? So What I've been doing, I can only access a certain part of the tank through the hole because there's basically big baffles in the way. So I don't know what's on the other side of the baffles. So obviously eventually this tank's going to have to come out and put lots of access holes in it or clean it all out then we know what's in the tank then. But we need to get this boat back. Costing us money and obviously the kids aren't here, babysitters, X, Y, Z. So we need to be able to move the fuel around inside the tank. We've been doing it with the engine because there is a return but it's not really moving that fast and it's pretty dark now. But Gemma, you know what Gemma's like, don't you? She's always got a hoover in her hand. She's had an idea of, let's put the hoover on blow, and then we'll try and blow the fuel around the tank. What do you think? And she's also come up with these. I'm still not 100% taken on them yet. They're basically sunshades for cars, but they're basically a filter. So if we can block off half the tank with this, then, it'll, then it's like a bit of a pre-filter, isn't it? I don't, I'm not sure about that yet. I think we've got to try the hoover first, give it a try and give it a blow round. Okay. Right, so I can't feel any crap. I've got a bit of diesel in my eye then. Oh, because I have safety spectacles. What when you're putting your hoover into the fuel tank? Did you not read that, that handbook? That tech no. tool talk? I think, I think if the marina watch this back, they'll be like, they're not coming back here. Right. right. Just give it a nudge, see what happens. Okay, not bad. Okay, give it a good blast in now. So that's uh, moving through a while. Yeah. Right, so should we see if we can get any chunks out? No, let me try in a different position. Okay. Boom. And they are hard. Yeah. I was saying to Gemma, it'd be good to like put like something heavy in there to go around and knock them, knock them down, down a bit. Do you know what I mean? We could like reduce the size. Um, they don't float. What would have been good? I can't get the. Here's the fuel feed here. I can't get the feed tube out. So if I could get the feed tube out, I could shorten the pipe. 
but I don't know how it's fitted. I'm guessing it's threaded from the top, but it's not coming out today, I'm afraid. So it is now 10 o'clock. <laughs> Ooh, said both to fun again. I think it was us. <laughs> Last night we were working till midnight. Now tonight, early finish. From seven o'clock this morning to now 10 o'clock at night. We are about to go and get a shower. We've just had something to eat. Simon's still messing around. We well, think. I've just, just aligned. I've just aligned the port side engine, um, which was pretty much the same amount of alignment as the starboard engine, by basically identical. Um, we reckon this one was about 15 foul. I could get a 15 foul feeler blade over a flange of what 150 mil. So it's quite a long way. I've had to move the back of the engine over about six millimeters. It's quite a lot really when it's a big solid thick shaft, there's no flexible coupling or anything like that. So I'm hoping the vibrations come down a lot, a lot on there. So I'm just saying to Gemma, we finished at midnight last night and it, there's, there's no saying that this one is absolutely bang on. So obviously when we get to our home port, we will do a full alignment, but spend the whole day and there'd be no, be no other rushes to go on, will there? So if you want to get a shower now, I think Gemma just pointed out, I stink. I have a diesel up to here on my sleeve. Yeah. Don't know what's going to this old t-shirt, but... So, sorry, I'm using a torch because look how dark it is. <laughs> so, um, yeah, come back. <laughs> come back tomorrow. <laughs> I, think I think we'll force them to come back tomorrow. I was just thinking, we've had no innuendos in this video. <laughs> this video has not been fun to make, to be honest. <laughs> this has been the most stressful boating experience I think we've ever had. So if you guys could fill us in with some good innuendo. <laughs> oh god. Was oh. the uh, I, I can't even think. Is the hole a bit too tight for your shaft, dear? The shaft is now aligned. But now aligned, okay. Yeah. But it shouldn't wobble anymore, so So I think this episode has probably gone on far too long. <laughs> So, I'm going to leave you on a cliffhanger as to what I'm so really oh, sorry. Don't do that, you need to see us sail off into the sunset. It, this video is going to be about five hours long with the amount of drama that we've had. If we set sail tomorrow and we sail home, then that's great. If we don't... It's going gonna... to be a video of Simon crying. <laughs> <laughs> and me sitting in a corner like getting whizzed off to the insane asylum so tell you what i'll do next time on ship happens can you give us an update it's not good we are coming back out of the water